Thank you and hello. And in the beginning, before I start, it can happen. I start to speak very quickly. And it, if it does happen, please tell me. Sometimes you know, I'm just get like overwhelmed. So what I try, what I tried to do with this lecture when I when I got invited was to um, to try to structure it so that I you know that I don't bore anybody by showing one image after the other from some kind of white cubes. This was my intentional idea. And I wanted to show you, since you are all art students, I want to show you also like my source materials or my how the work actually started or what was the idea behind it. So, I mean, it's a little bit of a mixture of, of both because I will bore you with boring uh, white cube pictures because I cannot do differently. And I show you images of the, um, of the um, um, starting points of works. And maybe I thought it's sometimes also interesting to see where artists starts, you know, like the backstage and what they do with it. And sometimes they fail and sometimes they make it very well. Because sometimes the idea which inspires you is much more, much more elegant and stronger than what you come out with. So maybe you will see this here as well. Or sometimes even better. But this is like, um, I think it's interesting to, for you to see because you do the same, I suppose. We all like have some kind of inspirations which are like taking over and then we try to transform them and they, so anyway. Um, I, gonna s I will also try to keep it a little bit um, time-wise uh, rather dense um, over like the last two years. And you will also see that I recycle a lot of works of mine. Um, I start with this work, which is, uh, no, it's not a work, actually, it's one of the backstage um, things of mine. This is the General Electric Building in New York City. And this was, I had a show in, um, in New York. Um, this was my first solo show in Chelsea, which was very exciting and terrifying as well. And um, I titled the show General Electric. And this building here is on, in Lexington 72nd Street. And this was originally built in the 20s to host a radio broadcasting company. And what, what they tried to do with this, um, with this architecture was to make it look as um, electric, as vibrant, as, um, um, well, it's an Art Deco uh, building. And I was very much inspired by the idea of New York of being like built on some kind of like <laughs> ultra waves, you know, that everything when you're there is shaking. And also the Indians who gave Manhattan to the settlers gave it almost for free because they said it's built on a stone, meaning that whatever, uh, whatever vibrations go, go into the ground, it goes immediately back up. That's why they say the city is not made for living because everybody gets very nervous. And I got very nervous in New York. So I made a show called General Electric, and um, I started to do like, um, for example, this is also an another side of the building, which is the logo of General Electric, which is the uh, energy company of, um, of New York, which are two hands holding a lightning bolt. And what I try to speak here as well is like about what I'm trying to do with my work is to combine like culture and violence, and um, meaning like cultural history, elegance, <coughs> beauty, architecture, and some kind of subconscious um, um, unresolved issues, you know. So th some of my works are like, you know, they look very quiet and elegant sometimes, but they're actually um, pure evil. So, and I, <laughs> and so I try like to combine with this, with this um, New York, with this architecture, with this um, streamline electric, um, Decoration, I wanted to combine nature. And this is a topiary garden in England, which I love topiary very much because it's the biggest, uh, for me, like the, the strongest idea of cultivating and taming nature and um, making it into this kind of <coughs> nice, lovely little, um, well, um, geometrical figures like chess play. And what I did with this was just like to, um, so no, oops, to make them a little bit more a little bit more electric. So it was one, some of my collages, which I did, did there. This is like um, some marble papers I put in the back. This was the, uh, I'm so sorry, some of the images are also low resolution to make it even more funny. So this was the invitation for the, for the show, which is like I wanted to put like some old fashioned marble over this kind of quiet, nice little, um, this is a collage of, two, of various pictures. Um, and so this, and out of this, um, because I made some works which were connected to nature. And I made this work some years ago, which was called The Bad Boys of Harvard. And the Bad Boys of Harvard were, uh, were those guys. This is a group of landscape architects from Harvard from 1930. And they were all kicked out because they were not following the ornamental idea of Beaux-Arts, but they wanted to make more um, some kind of groupus style. So what I did um, was to make this, um, this you know, good looking, very, bourgeois, you know, this kind of geometrical idea of putting nature together into this little gang. And this gang was moved in the night 
um, every day around the city. So I wanted this kind of uncanny idea that you see this and the next day somewhere else. It was, you know, so it was like moving all over Frankfurt, like the strange bad boys, but still looking very quiet. You know, this, the idea was just that you like look somewhere and, it's, and whatever was there is gone out of sudden. And out of this work, um, another idea was born, which was the, uh, my, um, and I think it's so funny because they don't look like bad boys at all. <laughs> but, this is, but I really, really like this. I mean, but maybe, maybe they're even better than all the bad boys ever. So, and out of this, um, another work of mine for the documenta, and excuse the green, I don't know why it's so green. So this is the work I did for the documenta. And I was invited rather late, you know, like, because, you know, I'm one of the younger artists, so I was in, and I also didn't really have a space. And they, the curators told me I can do whatever I want, which is, you know, sort of beautiful and also very frightening, um, especially for a show like the Documenta, but, well, so, so did I. And um, what I did was this little um, cypress trees, which later I found out look like carrots. But this is also, you know, what you, what you learn over the years of working that maybe orange and green is just a stupid idea <laughs> but you know like when i did this i didn't even thought about it so in the image like oh my god they look like humongous carrots <laughs> so but it was actually a very serious idea behind it so this work is titled um this work is dedicated to an emperor and i work with a military um historian and what i wanted to do was to um no, sorry, uh, coming back. So I had no, re no real space, so I had to ask them to be in the garden. And I decided that maybe I can do something which is like similar to the bad boys, you know, not occupying any space, but constantly moving. So, you know, I'm, I'm here for one day and there somewhere on, on the other. So I work with this military historian and I try like to establish some kind of a military strategy, how to conquer <laughs> um, the Orangerie, which was one of the, this is the Karlsauer in, in Kassel. So um, over the duration of the documenta, the trees um, were moving in, in various forms, you know. So there were like, there was 12 formations and they were slowly, you know, like, I, I will not show you all of them because it's boring, but this is like, you know, so they were, and nobody really knew what's going on. So nobody, I, I didn't tell anybody. So they were looking for the work, but the work moved already somewhere else. And um, yeah, this is, I mean, and the, the idea for this work came from, um, from Macbeth, and it's a beautiful story I'd like to tell you, um, because Macbeth asked, it's Shakespeare's, Shakespeare's Macbeth, and he asked the witches if there would ever come a moment when his kingdom will be uh, vanquished. And the witches said, as long as the forest <laughs> doesn't come to you, nothing will ever happen. So Macbeth thought, wonderful, a forest will never move, so I will never be conquered. What, what the soldiers did was to come to cut the trees down and to move every day slowly with the trees closer and closer to him without him noticing. And, uh, and then finally, you know, because he was looking out of the window, saying like, wow, the forest, wasn't it somewhere further? And I really like this idea of this kind of like gentle threat that you don't, which I've tried to get into my work, that you look and you just don't feel the threat, don't feel any kind of well threat or doesn't touch you very much but it slowly gets into you and you understand and actually you're getting poisoned <laughs> so uh, well um again sorry for the small resolution um now i'm going back to the show i had at, uh, at the gallery in, in chelsea and this is um, a work of mine which i continuously do and just called the wilderness i will show you better images of this those are four or five uh, different trees which are very strongly monocultural, meaning they don't allow any other species grow next to them because they are either they take too much water or create too much shadow. And, I, and they're like kind of predatory trees. But I try like to put them all together into this kind of baroque, um, you know, harmonious little, it doesn't look actually very harmonious, but you know, some kind of a um, democratic situation, but actually all of them, you know, just really, uh, um, you know, they would really kill, kill each other when you would leave them out in the nature. And I asked once a gardener how he does, how, how he deals with this, with this kind of dangerous trees, which, you know, like sucking all the energy out of others. And he said to me like, well, I just cultivate them. It was so simple, but I never thought about the fact that all the history of mankind is to cultivating things, which were actually when you le leave them alone, have a life um, which is much more um, cruel or Darwinistic, you know. So, um, do I speak, is this okay though? <coughs> yeah. um, uh, so this, and then so I made this show, this is from the General Electric show, which is, um, what you see here is, is called war furniture. And I wanted to make like two beds, which were used in Napoleonic Wars 
for the soldiers or like actually for the generals. And I like this idea that they were like built to be folded and to be put like on, on the car, on the donkey or whatever and taken away. So you rest while there is a war out there, but they are still, they're called collapsibles, which are really like. So this is like, this is like interior, which is actually collapsing in itself. So like all the soldiers you know, do, still during now, during the war, they all still create an interior, which they carry with them like a sacred heaven, but actually outside of this um, is, and they were like opening and closing on different, um, different moments. Um, and on the ceiling, what you see is uh, is a desert rose, desert rose crystals, which I, I have a miserable picture of them here. But um, those desert rose crystals um, are inspired by a work and uh, are inspired by a uh, called Subrosa. And Subrosa, you know, in ancient Rome, uh, when lovers or politicians met, they hung a rose on the ceiling as a symbol that everything was happening in the room is like confidential and secret. And uh, out of this rose, the, um, the, the chandelier um, was evolved, you know, the chandelier flowers which are around it. So actually, whatever happens in a room when you do it under this soup rosa, under the rose, is like, for, like, it's like highly sacred. And I wanted to create this room which is sort of like filled with this collapsible interior um, with a strange wilderness and um, the, the, this desert rose crystals, um, which like, um, reminds of whatever you do is, 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 um, is a sacred room where no, no, nothing what you say will be taken out. Um, now a funny jump. Um, so um, this, is from, this is from my last show, which I did, and I got deeply obsessed with, um, with the tomb of Tutankhamun or the idea of, uh, also the idea of Egypt. And you can't be, there's no idea of Egypt, there is Egypt. But uh, um, and for me, um, Egypt, like classical or pre-dynastic or dynastic Egypt, is a very interesting example of seeing um, a culture being born out of a stone, out of nothing. Like two eyes were put in, it became an anthropomorphic figure. You can see the culture going higher and higher until it becomes a perfect geometrical science, you know. And then you see the culture going down into a stone again. And this is something which we are in right now, you know. We are on the zenith of a certain culture, but you know. But in, with, with, with Egyptian, you can see like the, um, you know, the, 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 the growing and the, and the passing very nicely. <coughs> anyway, uh, this is the, these are the images, the ori original images of the very first entry into the tomb of Tutankhamun. And what I really liked also was the way how all the objects were like scattered around. And I got very inspired by this, how to, how to solve like this idea of having like a, a show and you put like things neatly on, on a pedestal. And I wanted like to throw them in the corner a little bit. I sort of didn't manage, but this is like the idea what I had, you know, I still want, would like to do a show where, you know, there is, it isn't nicely lit, there is, it isn't nicely framed, it's just, it's just really, I don't, I don't know, out of various reasons put into, into kind of a chaotic. Um, this is also another image of the tomb, which I love very much. I think it's a beautiful sculpture. It's, it's, and all the objects in this, in this, in this tomb were prepared for the, for the Pharaoh, for the God to start a journey. And this was a place where no humans should ever enter. And I try like to make the show at the Braunschweiger Kunstverein in a little bit similar atmosphere. I wanted to create a room which looks very quiet, but the humans are not welcome there anymore. And um, the show was called Dead Guardian. And I started, I'm gonna take you to the show now, um, room by room, it was a pretty big house and it, it was also pret pretty frightening for me how to fill it and it was uh, like outside, inside, there was a big garden and so on. I would have loved to make much more but then sometimes you start very ornamental and then you just try to dance it together. So um, this house was built by a very wealthy merchant who did everything he could to protect his money and to keep the wealth the same way by putting millions of um, mythological figures in this build in this building, like to to um, as a kind of a protective deities, like guardians. So I wanted to make the show just called Dead Guardian, when you know nothing is is safe anymore. It's like it's still there, sort of, but it's um, it will not stay with you. Um, if it makes sort of sense. Anyway, so the first room uh, is, is colored in this uh, lovely blue, which is uh, Pompadour blue. And Pompadour blue was next to the, um, uh, the work is called Who Cares, Who Wins. Uh, it, Pompadour blue, the favorite color of Ma Madame Pompadour, very Rococo, very elegant, but also it was the color of the SAS, the Special Air Service, which is a very um, interesting and frightening group of guys, which were found, I think, in the 
beginning of the Second World War in Oxford. And they, were tr they trained themselves as being this kind of first um, special um, soldier service, that, which would go like, into the most dangerous situation to like, get like, the hostages out or whatever. And they still exist, and they're very mad people. High on drugs, you know, very violent, but very romantic. They see themselves really. And so the color they used for them was the pompadour blue. And I, I like this idea very much, you know, sort of like beside of this very feminine idea, also like the, um, the symbol of, um, of a very violent male gang. And the, the motto was, who cares, who wins? In the middle, you see this little, little flask. This flask is, um, is, um, is a silver flask, which I put like in, in, which is covered in platinum. Platinum is a very strong catalyst inside this flask, um, this, this little silver thing hanging from the ceiling is hydrogen. Hydrogen and, and oxygen actually are pretty okay with each other, but when you uh, put them together with, uh, with uh, platinum, they create an explosion. So what it is, is a bomb. It, it's, it's very serene, very calm, but if you would open it, the connection of the platinum and you know, the two other elements would create an explosion. But I wanted to keep it as serene and as, as unassuming as possible. So it actually the room is like a, yeah. It's almost an explosion, and the title is um, Curious and Cold <coughs> Epicurean Young Ladies. Um, then I had some crabs coming out of the, uh, of the floor. Um, story to this is, this is um, I have, by the way, my titles are always very long, but they're very important for me. So this is called um, All the Houses Are Gone Under the Sea. Uh, those crepes are um, um, replicas of, of the one which were used after the obelisks were, was, were taken away from Egypt. And you know, when they cut as a, as a trophy, and when they cut the obelisk down, and they try like, to settle it back again in, in I don't know, in, in Rome or in, in Paris, you know, it lost its balance. So to keep the balance together, they put like these metal crepes under it, which I liked very much. So like all this power was like standing on these little bronze um, wedges. Um, then the next room was a door, a sealed door with a broken basket, and I copied, uh, the door was also made for me, um, and I copied the, the seal of Tutankhamun, which is like, which was, this is a one-to-one -one copy of it, and this was, um, I like it very much because it was an image taken of it a second before it was cut, and it was there for like 5,000 years before it was um, destroyed to see the chamber of Tutankhamun. Um, the next room, was looking like this. Um, you have the soup rosas again on the ceiling, um, the little baskets which were like ripped apart and they were spread through all the house. You know, the show looks very, very minimal compared to my ideas I had, you know, like with this lavish tomb idea, tomb like aesthetics, but maybe it's, maybe it was okay. Um, and this was on the wall. I'm sorry, I have not, not a b better image. Those are like two huge agate, I hate, I hate agate. And there's like this, this is like the holy third eye used for um, uh, s kind of spiritual issues. And I, I put them into the, into the wall, so they're like, they're like the guardian looking at you. It looked very spooky though, you know, because they, they shine some, but they're real, um, they are real stones. Um, and then I had like this work, which is, um, which is called Interbellum, and it consists of two furnitures, one is in its monolithic state and the other in its, um, in its broken state. And um, interbellum, and I want to have a work which is the same but different, like the same, like the, the arcane and untouched, and one which is always open, always, always exploded. And um, there is some stuff in it, but it always varies. And um, in interbellum is maybe, as you know, the, um, they call like the, um, at the time between the two world wars, the first and the second is called the interbellum, the between wars. And this was a very interesting time, which inspires me a lot, because it was like a very traumatized uh, generation being thrown from one war into the madness of drugs and music and you know sexual openness and avant-garde, and they were all thrown into the second world war. So I, I think it's a very fascinating time. I don't know if I captured very well with this furniture, but <laughs> you know, as I said, this is also about like what I try to do here is like to tell you where, where the stories are coming from and what you do with them and if it works or not. And I never know if the works I did actually stand for themselves strong enough. Maybe the story is better. So I tr tell you the story. And then, um, yeah, this is also an, it is just an, also an image with inspirational image for me. This is a god, you know, which is so sometimes, sometimes in its, in its closed uh, situation. 
<coughs> closed state and then um, I love this image a lot. This is usually in the in the in the furniture inside. It's a lotus. Um, also in, inside it was this um, um, this pillar, and I saw this image once in an Egyptian temple. And the pillars, you know, of course, very simple. The symbols of complete strength, and you know, everything is is, is on top of them. You know, the whole the whole structure is, is is resting on the pillar. But this one, funnily enough, was the the middle of it was missing, and nothing happened. It was still there, and I found it very puzzling. And I, I still like it very much because it's you know it, because it should actually if, if if something like this happens, the whole building, the whole system should collapse. Everything should destroy. But this is still there, you know, like in in its sort of life, look. On on use. I don't know. I I I really I really yeah. I I liked always the image of this of this interrupted pillar losing its its sense in itself, but be becoming something else. You know, like a strange. Um, I don't know what. It's called the interrupted pillar. Um, some images of the of the of the tomb, which I love very much as well, from Tutankhamun. And then what I did with this, what this. <laughs> So I, 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 and I ripped his baskets, and I liked, I liked this idea also very much. I mean, it all looks very low key, but I, I like this idea because, you know, in, in reality, they look very violent in a strange manner because you put so much effort into waving a basket, and they look like something very handmade with a lot of love, and you carry things within it, you know, and you just like, you create a civilization. And if, if, if they are so ripped and it looked like something very evil happened, and I threw those baskets like all over the, this lovely, uh, um, huge building, and it, it, yeah, like like something like, like something would have passed through it, something um, quick and violent. Then um, this was um, the main room, which, as you see, is very very lavish. But I wanted <laughs> to keep it like it is. The only thing I did, like the t the three things I did, was to put the baskets in it, um, the lioness, um, and this strange thing hanging from the chandelier. The lioness. Um, I made some months before for a show I had at Arena Sofia in Madrid, and the show was called The Beasts, Las Fieras. And um, the museum in Madrid, maybe you've been there, is like really a temple of um, of respect to the arts and to culture, and it's a very sacred. And I, I was very honored as well to be there, of course. But uh, the way how how you know art historians are dealing with art, with something we do, is with so much you know gentleness and carefulness and always white gloves you know and putting it right and I and I wanted to do something I tried to do something which is like putting some kind of uh, some kind of a beast in it you know so I, I, I made this huge uh, lioness which is sitting on a pair of black gloves um, maybe you see it and I wanted also the lioness to be turned away from from people um, because usually, you know, if you have a wild animal in a certain degree or like some kind of a threat, it's usually it looks at you or some kind of lurks at you or waits for you. But I wanted to have one which is like just not even doesn't bother anymore. It's just turned away, you know, something. So, and I and I, I find it very, very disturbing, you know, because you just like um, I want to create a kind of a room where the threat is already gone. But she's sitting on these gloves and the gloves are coming, you know, coming soon. Um, the inspiration for this was this very terrifying lion I discovered in, in Brussels, at the, um, which is, I don't know what it is, but it looks for me like the devil himself. Um, and I also was very impressed by this kind of, um, yeah, by this, by this the, the body was um, was put together. And I just, uh, yeah, and I, I found it as a very um, terrifying, bizarre, um, bizarre uh, sculpture to have. Um, on the, um, on the chandelier in this room, there is this a piece called um, something made of cloth, which belonged to the pharaoh, which is um, the title is taken from the no notes of Howard Carter, because sometimes he was discovering things in the tomb, but he didn't even really knew what it was. So this was just, and what it is, is like a cover for a gentle, for, um, for a suit. Um, and it's made in, in uh, uh, with um, Egyptian blue wool which will be later um, when we go through the rooms revealed why. And I wanted to have something in the room which looks a little bit strange, like somebody left it, somebody you know, left this room in a hurry, hung something on the, on the, on the chandelier to make it a little bit like eerie. Um, so sorry, what's the dimension of that? Of a human. <laughs> yeah, it's no, it's like it's, well, you can see it here. I'm sorry, you can see it here. It's, no, you cannot. It's one, one meter 80, more or less. Um, yeah, this is like f kind of a garment bag. I don't know how you call this. 
Um, then you go upstairs in the rooms and um, I put like a, this is a bronze snake, which is a copy of a snake, of a, of a, um, of a magician's wand from Egypt. And it used to be straight and a symbol of pure power. I think like some, some, uh, yeah, some magicians hold it in their hands. And over the centuries, it just got coiled more and more and more and broke into two pieces. And I copied it once to once. I liked it very much because it was like a scepter, you know, which over the, um, you know, which was which was used to punish, but over the centuries, it sort of, you know, just the chemistry did its own. Um, f from from this from this place, um, uh, you you go into this little room, which is um, which is the work is plainly what it is. It's called hydrochloric acid on marble, and it's um, it's a it's inspired by the pre-dynastic, uh, Egyptian pre-dynastic um, head of an, of an elephant. And I spoke about this before, what, what I'm really interested in, what I, what I love about Egypt, about this, this time was that, you know, out of a strange storm, when you put two eyes in it, um, like the when humans started like to, 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 to give their own face and their own features uh, to stone and to materials, then it became sort of a, then culture started, you know, sort of like, so anyway, so if you put like two eyes into a piece of marble, it looks immediately like something, you know, we can relate to. But um, what I did with this is um, I covered it in hydrochloric acid, which is one of the strongest acid in exists. And hydrochloric acid has the, um, it dissolves marble completely. And um, so the idea is that over the duration of shows I'm having, because I continue doing this work, is to, to destroy or like to transform the, 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 the form of the marble into, it, well, it, it just dissolves itself. So and actually there is a glass missing because it was very dangerous to touch it. I put like, uh, there was like, uh, um, acid was put there every day. Um, the next room was this chamber-like room with, um, where you can see like the black gloves and, um, and, the, and the blue garment back, you know, coming back, which you saw downstairs. And um, this is me and I'm, I'm it's very dark. I'm sorry, but uh, you know the, the gestures you can see here are mudras, are the, uh, one of the most holiest ideas in Buddhism. How to put like uh, because it's, these are the, the the spiritual gestures of complete enlightenment, or of total freedom of mind, of the absolute beauty of existence. And I really like this idea that you know that you can put something which is unspeakable into a gesture. You know, like um, like this here, for example, is like the the the. Sh the, the the wheel of fortune or like the absolute, so like the divine ideas of calming yourself. And I wanted to put, make this about in black gloves, you know, like a banker, like a strange um, Western European cultured person who does like this almost cynically, you know, the, the gestures of complete serene um, wisdom. I, I don't, I, yeah. Um, then the next room was the last room, and I I I, I came back here. Um, it was this was the the upper floor of there were like two floors in this in this huge house. And I came back to the wilderness I showed you in the beginning, and this is um, again. Uh, and I wanted to close the show with like the nature taking over, like after all this journey through like various stages of Egyptian magic and wild animals and some gloves. And then there, this, I put like this entire room in, in almost, um, yeah, in, in a ver variety of trees, which were like, as I said before, very strongly um, opposing each other. And the room was very, like very peaceful, but when you, when you, but also a bit scary, you know, it's like, it's, it was a bit dense. Um, yeah, this is, it's called a wilderness. And uh, it goes out like this. How tall is it before you? The ceiling. Uh, you, actually, your head was inside the trees. <laughs> <laughs> so, because this was the, the yeah, this was the servants' part. So, like, it was it was lower. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I got those trees also from a forest because, <laughs> um, well, it's just, it was, it was in, I did it in March, and you know, you cannot just go to a forest and cut all these trees. But then we found out that one of the donors of the Kunstverein uh, is a graf, <laughs> and uh, this graf owns a huge forest. <laughs> And and they said to me that March is really not the, not the time to cut any trees because there is the Vogelbrut, how do you say it, the birds, no? But the Graf didn't care at all about the Vogelbrut. <laughs> so me and the, me and the, um, his private, um, how do you call it, forest guy, 
the first there. We went there and cut cut everything down. You know, it was like I was I felt really bad about it after a while, but I that I had like but it was beautiful because it was really sumptuous and I had like all the trees I ever wanted. But um yeah, this was it was also a bit wilderness, you know, because it was a it was a private forest, you know, of some I mean how can a forest be even private, you know? And there was like and you can go and hunt there and kill animals, you know, and then the guy came and told me like I would so yeah, I have a very good dermatologist. I don't I don't know, it was like a very strange man anyway, but so he was very happy to be a part of this exhibition. But so you know, the strange things are happening when you get try to get trees, especially um so, well, on the show was very quiet down, um, and I, it was very, very conscious of me to keep it very low. And um, and I and I sometimes I hope that I can get like this kind of an atmosphere or some kind of a little doom or something that's a bit strange, or something that's a little bit twisted, without having putting too much into it. Um, you know, like a good thriller. Um, I mean, I'm still working on it. You know, some kind of a Hitchcock style that you just have a little bit of an element, and you just go like, "Wow!" But this was here before. Now it's there. Or this looks a little bit twisted, without being too much in your face. Um, um, I think I'm ru rushing very fast because I'm almost at the end <laughs> 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 with my entire oeuvre. <laughs> No, because I really put it together in the last two years, but maybe it's okay, no? I mean, you don't have to listen to me. And I have a great movie at the end. <laughs> so um, anyway, I got very much obsessed with the black gloves idea. And this started also when I was living in, in Spain for a while in Madrid, which is also very interesting because a very severe culture still is. You know, they're very proud. Spanish men do not lay down on the, on, on the sand, on the beach. They stand on the beach. Mm -hmm. Um, so, which was, no, I just, because I just went to, to Spain and I was lying down, but my friends were like, no, 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 we don't lay down. So they were like standing above me, it's like, and then they went to the water and stand in the water. Anyway, but it was, it really impressed me, you know, this kind of a uh, deep core in, uh, you know, of, um, of pride. Anyway, so, and when I was living in, in Madrid, I bought this gloss, which I handmade, and there is, and I started to touch things, you know, so I was walking around the city touching everything, and it became a little bit, it became very scary, very simple little experiment you do, because if you take gloves like this, which are, of course, assassin culture, distance, you know, no fingerprints, tra-la-la, -la, so everything you touch becomes some kind of a part of a conspiracy. I had more of them, but I didn't want it to, maybe I have one more? Yeah, this here. It's a bit strange though, but I was trying to touch silver with it. And this is an Egyptian temple which was in Madrid. So I made a huge series of this, um, of this hands with gloves, but after a while it just got a bit boring, so I decided to make them a little bit more complex and, and I asked a banker friend of mine to perform again those mudras in a very eerie light. And this work actually, an another anecdote was I was once in the night going in Italy somewhere and it was and we got stuck in a huge um anyway it was very boring in the bus and there was a very small little light going just you know at, in my in my jacket so I started like to, to take selfies of my jacket but it looked very beautiful because it was a very pointy little light so I started to make little gestures and out of this you know this whole work was also born so you know sometimes the work's coming out of the most bizarre moments so this was and it's a whole series called the, a man of his word which is another word for a gentleman. And this banker is doing like all this, um, this variety of, of gestures which are actually just, um, which are exclusive for Buddha. Is there a mudra? Mudras, yes. Mudras, they call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, and I, as I said before, and I really like them as an idea because they really, um, they put together with that one gesture so many philosophical or like, or like spiritual ideas. And this is, um, I, th I find them very powerful. Also like with this, because almost iconoclasmic, if you know Buddhism a little bit, it's very weird to see them being done by a, by a s clearly uh, Western European man of power. And I, I got invited to, to take part in the Taipei Biennial and I just came back from there and I, um, and without me really realizing this, I put them also in this in in this show uh, in in my, in my work and uh, or in my room. And it looked very strange because out of sudden, out of various reasons, and I can tell you this, um, it all became very Asian. And maybe an another for you as as students of art is also like um, because um, 
when I did the show, it, which was like so, so far away, I was communicating mostly via PDFs and Skypes and I was sending images back and forth. And I wasn't there to touch the materials, to choose them and so on. Everything was built for me, which is a room um, more or less this size. Um, actually, this is the wrong lie because it was completely dark in there. Um, and I arrived there and within like a week, this incredible room was built for me, immaculate, but it looked completely Japanese. So, and I, and I wanted to have it some kind of an, you know, 70s office style, but then it was like so serene and beautiful. It was, uh, and then like with this mudras, I was like, wow, it's like an homage to spirituality in Asia, but it wasn't really. So the room, what we see here, this is a room installation, just one part, <laughs> which is called um, Tasks Abandoned Before Completion. And um, the elements which are in this room are um, sulfur and CDs, actually, but it's a sulfur, charcoal, and saltpeter. Um, and those are the three uh, basic materials for gunpowder. So if you would take this, this raw, raw, raw form and put them in a different, or like culture them, you know, like you do with nature, if you would do it into a scientific chemi chemical idea, you would get a, you know, you would get like um, a highly explosive out of it. But I wanted to put it into this room, which is like symbolizes some kind of like um, calm, serene idea of like making it work, you know, being like, oh, this is so dark, I'm sorry. But you see, this is charcoal <laughs> in darkness. And then, but still being untransformed, you know, still being in its r raw form. And there was a carpet with a dude. Um, wait, yeah, so this was, yeah, so this was the, um, and th uh, just briefly, sorry, so the, the, uh, and th the mountains of, the mountains around Taipei are all like uh, volcanic, so there's a lot of sulfur around. So this is like, so this was basically like a room, like an office space with the mudras uh, on the side, abandoned, but you know, with all the materials to, 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 to do a bomb if needed, but still very low key, very like um, medieval almost. Um, what side is it behind the, the office space? Is it also related to this? Say again? The, the idea of the office? Yeah, the well, space? yes, I wanted to have a, a, a space of power, you know, a space of complete. I like to combine this idea of this Western cleanness, you know, this kind of. Um, um, non-spirituality but incredible uh, uh, well it's very stereotypical but let's put it like kind of this pure logic and then i wanted to, and i wanted to this office to be abandoned and filled with like the yeah primeval forces of of nature which with which when de dealt with them differently can become very lethal when a human touches them i think everything that a human is touching becomes lethal sooner or later and this is um I wanted to put some office stuff in it. And this was also like a, this funny element of doing it, you know, I just wanted to, this was super improvised. <laughs> I was like running around like, what the hell should I do with this immaculate room? And, but you don't really see this because actually like inside, sorry, th these are the images I got because they still haven't done the properly. Inside the, uh, the half open drawer, it's filled with salpeter. Um, which is um, Schwef, no, Salpeter is um, potassium nitrate, which is, um, yeah, anyway. But what I didn't knew was it looked completely like cocaine. It looked like a drawer full of white powder. I was like, oh God, you know, that's great. Uh, but, and then um, like also like um, here on the, um, on the chair, there's a huge piece of charcoal as well. <laughs> And um, also in, in this charcoal, you don't see it very, but there are like pens inside, you know, like, like somebody, like, because I wanted a kind of an office situation, but a bit strange, like somebody put like pens and there were like post-it notes everywhere. I'm sorry, I don't have better images. It's, um, it's, it's, you know, very fresh. And I want, yeah, and I want to have something like, you know, now. And this is um, the pillar, um, now in its original form as marble, which I also underestimate because I want to hang it from the ceiling. It was in front of the, of the room, but you cannot hang a massive marble um, from the ceiling. This is also, and the second part, which is a bit bad picture, but the second part of it was, was downstairs in a museum. And it was covered in hydrochloric acid daily. So over the duration of the, of the biennial, it becomes like, it will not dissolve obviously, but it will become more, more corroded and you know, there will be some, and actually maybe one day if I'm gonna continue showing it, I want it to disappear completely. Ideally both part of the marble. And um, yeah, and this is, this is the end. <laughs> 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 uh, 
uh, and this is the yeah and uh, to coming back like to maybe get like the, the from the beginning and you remember the electric you know the, the new york el electrical building you know when they try like to control the power and control like the bolts and I was very much impressed about the idea of New York, an idea of art trying like sometimes like to keep things together. And then there is, and this is like the, the logos. And this is, a, this is from Egypt, the colors of Nemos, uh, which was once a beautiful, most likely beautiful image of a pharaoh, but now transforms back again into stone in what it was. Thank you. Say again. You feel yourself threatened. Threatened? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> From myself. No, no. I mean, if if I wouldn't feel, I think it's um, um, yes. I feel threatened by other people, and I'm very much aware of this. I'm I'm I, and I prefer the idea of not trusting or not feeling welcomed or not welcomed. Yes, but I I. I I think my art or like what really what really drives me is like out of this idea you know that you don't trust you don't you don't you don't see the things like how they are you always go deeper you know like radi like radiating um, garbage which is like put under the ground you know and it looks beautiful on top but there is something underneath it so uh, it's not really a threat it's some kind of an awareness maybe and maybe I just like thrillers I don't know <laughs> <laughs> just like, this is it. Yeah, but I mean, I'm not a very anxious person. I, I you know, I, I try to keep myself as much as it's just for the for my art. I like to bring this kind of like we all do. You know, you try to bring yourself in a different different mode because if you always be yourself, I don't know. I, I try like to to stimulate myself by getting nervous, and then the works are coming. If I'm very happy and content, you know, I just I don't know. I can open a solarium, I guess, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so, to make people happy. <laughs> so. Also threatening. What's threatening? Oh, solarium. Solari yeah, this is really <laughs> scary, you know? <laughs> yeah, see? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, well, you know, because yeah, I wanted to uh, show you this. This light is very scary, too. <laughs> it's like, um, no, because I want to show you, like, how sometimes, you know, work is born, and this is, and I'm still doing it, and I still don't know why and so on. But, you know, we all try, like, to get, to bring ourselves into maybe some kind of, like, I know it's so stupid, some kind of a subconscious idea of yourself, you know? And then, so, but, um, yeah, I don't know, I, I, but I always like this idea, like once I made one, my very, very first work I ever did when I, when I in, 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 a, in the academy was, um, it's a big, beautiful, voluptuous uh, bouquet of flowers, which looked amazing, it smelled fantastic. But according to the Victorian flower language, all of these flowers were super insulting. So it was like a big fuck off, but it was like beautiful. And people were like, oh, you know, they went there and smelled it and they felt like, mm. And then, but from the moment they read the title and they understood it, and I really liked the way how they like moved away from it, all of a sudden the same thing, which was exactly the same beautiful voluptuous flower, became something very, you know, appalling. And I was very much inspired by this, you know, that's why I also made like a work, a guide to insults and misanthropy. <laughs> So you know, so but uh, uh, there was always a hint. So like, if you if you if you read the title, you just get into this. But I like this idea of you now that you enter a place and you feel so powerful and you think you understand the things and you know you just like you're a good person and things are okay. But then, but they are not sometimes, you know. And this kind of you have to, um, yeah, just be aware, double check. I mean, I, I do at least, you know. I, I like this idea that things are not what they are, and if they're not, then I create them, you know. But yeah. work a lot with this tension between title and yes, thread. a lot. And yeah, the sometimes. You give, like the stories you've been telling us now, they're sort of like hidden in the titles. So there is no extra. Well, they're in the titles. Sometimes they are in the um, mm -hmm. in the press release. But I started doing less and less. In the beginning, I was very open about, it, but then it became super didactic. <laughs> you know, it was like I made a riddle and then like, haha, -ha, but you know. But it's also you learn from this, and I, you know, I'm in the. Sometimes it's a good work, of course. I don't know what a good work. A good work is a good work, the one which functions without a title or just a title or just a work, or it stimulates you differently. But yes, like, and sometimes you know, I also like the idea that you look at a work and you understand it like 
a year later or two or three, you know, it's completely fine with me. So if when people see my work and they just get it like five years later, it's also fine. I think. You haven't spoken about, I don't know, um, finding or creating the titles. Um, well, you know, the titles are, sometimes the title is there before the work. Mm -hmm. A lot of the titles were now quotes from T.S. Eliot, mm -hmm. whom I deeply love. So um, sometimes they're like, like little elements of poems. Um, mm, they are, you know, I'm reading a lot. So this was just like, well, but it's like, uh, there's a lot of l and literal, <sighs> yeah, but, yeah, but sometimes the title is dead a long time before the work is there and I carry it with me and I like it. And then, or sometimes they are from the I Ching. I do the I Ching, I Ching, do you know this? This Chinese, yeah, yeah, yeah. the divination system. Um, uh, which is beautiful and I really recommend you to read this. It's very bizarre because it's like 3,000 years old and it's um, sort of uh, throwing the coins and so on, but it's like, uh, it's, it's like the idea of, I think the entire Taoistic idea of China is more or less explaining it. And it's, but it's completely poetic and all the, you know, all the ad advice is given, giving to humans to calm down and keep steady or to like to be, to be active are taken from nature. So, so for example, um, the electricity, sometimes electricity uh, withdraws into the earth and rests, which I love very much. I use it as a title, you know, so for, for a show or a tasks abandoned before completion is also a, a I Ching divination and so on. Yeah, they come from various things. Sometimes what I misunderstood also, a lot of works. <laughs> yeah. I like the sentence that you said, um, that sometimes you don't know if the, the stories are actually better mm. than the object. Yeah, very dangerous, and yeah. No, I was wondering if sometimes, do you feel sometimes tempted to actually tell the story? So make a big, overwhelming installation, a big narrative? Or do you all always no, this I, low key? I prefer low key because I'm afraid that it's mm. better. Yeah. <laughs> No, because then it became the di didactic, you know, because if I explain this all the time, but you know, it's like, it's, I try like, to find out a solution, how to deal with it. You know, sometimes I just try to make an interview out of the press release where the things are explained. Um, in the titles are always a hint, um, but I would never go so far to explain like um, some of the images I showed you, I would never put together with the work. Um, Not, not in this one, but in the no, last the, one. The, the yeah, yeah, I wrote, one. I wrote a text myself. And this is related to the work, like, is it, does it tell the story, or is it just yeah, like yeah. an idiom, like another? It's a completely story. bizarre text. Uh, uh, like, I find it very nice, but everybody says it's completely bizarre. <laughs> but it's like, I think it makes completely sense. It's about like two people packing up the tomb of Tutankhamun. You know, because I travel a lot, so I stand a lot in my house and like pack, packing things and you think like what should go or should not go. And then I thought like that this is like these two guardians, which I showed you before, you know, and they're just like standing in the tomb and packing up all the stuff. But you can read it, it's, it's, coming, out, it's coming out soon. <laughs> <laughs> so. The one, one more question. Um, the, the leaves or the, the trees, they're dying during the period. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. No. Is it like moving trees around? No, 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 not at all. Uh, this, this, you I didn't. Them, Sometimes I try to. I don't. I'm not very much interested in ma 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 macabre. I don't like dying. You know, decaying. This is too obvious. I like when it's fresh and lovely. You know, and you just go like, mm. <laughs> and then you go like, but it's, uh, but this kind of because then it's more scary. You know, because when it starts to die, then it's, then it's bec because this installation Braunschweig when it started to become dry, it looked really spooky. But it was too much, you know, this wasn't the idea of the work. The idea is that the things should be alive and, and well. And the shows that go on for one week. Well, it is, I usually just run away and <laughs> like say like, <laughs> no, I, I still have to figure it out, you know, because I want to make this work, but I didn't knew what it, you know, after, you know, I learned it's like looking terrible, but yeah, but this is how it is. It wasn't really my intention. Like with, um, with the cypress trees, it was a bit better, but because um, they were potted. But yeah, well, anyway, I didn't show you a lot of other of my other of my work, which are like, you know, related to <laughs> I, I did a lot of works about ciphers and codes, you know, and mystical languages, which are like hidden within the interior, but you really don't know what it is. 
but this is like a you know this i didn't want it to bring everything up but this is like my latest um two years which i did with this year or like the, my latest year which i um let it a little bit go because my other work some of them were much more like complex with very strong uh, um um, re references to, to certain things and you know for example like I, I used I made a whole work which was based on Francis Bacon's ciphers Francis Bacon um, the philosopher from the 16th century he made like a uh, he made um, the very first binary code and I made like a huge work which is completely based on this but it's but then I it's, it's sort of like I would like to dive more into this kind of subconscious fear right now I don't know why but yeah anyway more questions? Um, if you would like to, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, so please. Uh, about the dog, you meant over the, um, the trees. Um, do you care about dimensions? I mean, what do you care about dimension? Like in, in, in yes. the museum, it looks very sort of like uh, yeah. Alistair of these, yeah? And, and in the documenta, I couldn't read the word because I it's sort of like these pots were hard to. I know, I know, there was, I know, I know, but it's like, the thing is like, I want to have them, of course, big and strong, but nobody can move a tree this size, yeah. you know, and I was like, I found this out way too late, you know, I, everything was done, I wanted like to have this big, beautiful, strong uh, cypress trees, but those are like 200, 300 kilos each, mm -hmm. so out of a sudden, the gardener told me, you know, like, two weeks before, you know, we have to order this delicate ones, and like so they budget and logic which are like common sense which i didn't have at all you know so and then as i look at them it's like this looks terrible they look like drunken you know russian soldiers and not like a, you know so and like so it, it took me also like i know it was like ooh, for me as well but you know the threat i try like to play with was something different because as you said they looked not very impressive but through the movement over the over the 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 weeks People told me that they did create a different kind of, of uncanniness, not the one which I designed in the beginning. You know. I think it depends on. I mean, when I saw them first, I thought they were leftovers from some sort of like party event. Like, a, <laughs> sorry to tell you. What are you doing like, to me? Like there wasn't. So they were official events, and they didn't take back like the the, the decorations. Yeah, yeah, and this I is them. Yeah, sure, but you know, I, you know, I did the work without knowing how it looks like. You know, I just started. I put it there, mm -hmm. and I had like to, and over the, you know, it had to be moved. It was moved by me. It was moved oh. by five boys, and I said like, okay, this is the maximum we can move, mm -hmm. and they have to be like this, and it was already like 70 kilo each. So, uh, and it was like I had to, I had to react very quickly. You know, I was when I saw them, I was a little bit nervous, <coughs> and I knew, but you know, this is how sometimes things are, <coughs> and you have to. Yeah. Sometimes you create a humongous, you know, carrots, you know, for documenta, and this is okay. <laughs> but no, yeah, but it's true. They were like, but this was, yeah, it was also like a pragmatic uh, issue about this, you know. They were just, what I wanted was just not possible. Um, if you would like to, I, um, if you would like to see something, um, I can just put it on because this is, I just discovered it yesterday, Steven Soderbergh um, just uh, took um, Riders of the Lost Ark, the Indi last Indiana Jones, and made it into black and white silent movie with a great soundtrack and it's amazing. And if you like to see this, it's very funny. And I, and I, bet it's, I think it relates sometimes, I like it. So if you would like to, I can just put it on, no? And you just, no? If there are no more questions when I watch a movie? It doesn't work. Is it the internet? No, wait, it does. Let's see. I hope it's not too loud. But you don't have to watch this two hours, you know, but it's just <laughs> 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 <
but it's um, it's very nice. <laughs> 